Hello, this is Cory the Keyblade Wielder, and we are back for another commentary. Disney versus non-Disney villains, part two, round two, and I try the round two got blocked for some reason. Hopefully, it'll come back, and uh, I try to look up the Vimeo, but my iPad is not as modern as everyone else's. You can see the difference between this iPad and everyone else's flat screen iPads. So I can't access Vimeo or whatever. So what video am I on? It's on YouTube obviously and it's the fan commentary that was from CK Primeval 7. And CK Primeval 7 if you're watching this I hope you don't mind but I really want to get this category in alphabetical. I hope you don't mind. I'm not trying to copy you. Don't worry. I got you on mute. So that way I don't do it. So that's the only way I can get the clips. <sighs> Sorry, dude. Um, Alright, let's get this started. Okay, first fight. Uh, what was his name again? Hold on. Oh yeah. Okay, now I remember it's Madame Medusa versus Major Blood and the Baroness. Sorry, I just need the names right. I'm not good with names sometimes. Okay, Cobra Commander is sending I mean Major Blood has got a contact mission from Cobra Commander and get the Baroness to go fight Madame Medusa, one of Corella's allies. Okay, I like how you got. Uh, oh, Man Wu and 73 Win Man. Uh, Man Wu made them shooting look like it's actually shooting them with the fireworks and stuff. And you can tell the difference between the animation style that um that the reboot of GI Joe, which is called GI Joe Renegades, is from like the 2000s. The Rescuers, which is a movie, was from the 80s, and you can tell by the difference of animation of how animations have changed, or gone different and stuff. And or how home is explode. And I'm guessing this is the last time we'll be seen of Medusa. Oh, you have a dark sense of humor, don't you? And Mr. Snoops, that is. Next fight, uh, Mosenrath from Disney's Aladdin the series versus Stormella. Uh, Yzma recruits Mosenrath in to Shane Yu's outlines, but first had to test his strength to fight against Stormella, or one of the uh, alliance of the Snow Queen. And the Snow Queen has recruited Stormella from Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the movie. First thing about Mosenrath that he's one of my favorite Disney TV villains. Yeah, he's he's the fan favorite of the Aladdin villains. Truly. And one thing interesting, he was once an apprentice of the sorcerer named Disdain, who was the original ruler of the Black Sands, which is like a kingdom made out of Black Sands, and he's like a sorcerer who abuses Mosenrath. But Mosenrath usurped Disdain's throne of the kingdom, turned him into his own zombie minion, which is called a, a mumlock or something. Yeah, he's got an army of Momlocks or whatever they're called. I'm just going to call them his zombie minions. Molzenrath has the zombie minions. Uh, Mephiles1111 Horror Cat Girl, if you're watching this, uh, let me know what you think of Molzenrath with the alliance of zombies, that is. Or his minions of zombies. How, what'd you think? Even though you like horror and stuff. Just asking. And Storm, I have not seen the movie. He's, she's from the movie called Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer the movie. And you wonder why it's because the Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the, the one we know was a TV miniseries, you know, which is all stop motion. 
Well, this version of Rudolph, the movie that is, is from Golden Films. Unless you've seen all the famous reviews, they are the ones who made a bunch of knockoffs of Disney, DreamWorks, and Don Bluth. Which are really bad. <laughs> really. Poorly made, that is. And they thought of making Rudolph into a movie instead to put in theaters to see if it might be a big hit. Which, of course, it's not. I've not seen it, but I've seen from Bob Show's review of that movie, and it is not good. I think the interesting, the positive thing is the villain song called I Hate Santa Claus. Go look it up on YouTube. Plus, the villain, Stormella, is played by Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, one of my favorite actresses. Uh, there's those zombie minions I was telling you about. Tough enough to deal with them. And, and Moserat blocks her with magic. And uh, yeah, one thing I also learned from History Buff, he used to watch that movie. He thought it was a good film, but when he, he looks back on it, it's like, wow, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah, the movie does look stupid. It does. Which, we can all agree, the, the TV miniseries of Rudolph, which is stop motion by Rankin Bass, is much better than that. Oh, and Mosenrath wins. Sorry. Um, next fight. Uh, Demona from Disney's Gargoyles, the series, versus Skeletor from He-Man. David Xanatos introduces Dr. Draken to Demona. And wait. Look at him. Okay, he, when he did, like, ho, oh, he's like... He probably looks at Demona like, Damn, that girl's attractive. What <laughs> hot fox? I mean, yeah, who would care? No, no one cares if she's a monster or not. She's pretty attractive. And Xanatos is sending Demona to Snake Mountain to fight up against Skeletor. I've seen a few things on He-Man. I'm now on episode 21. I should probably go back to watching it. And one thing I know about Demona is that oh, in the show Gargoyles, back a thousand years ago, after the humans betrayed the Gargoyles by turning them into stone, Demona felt betrayed by the humans. She really, really, really do. And she hates humans now, and she wants to exterminate all of the humans. Plus, she made an enemy of, of a one human, Macbeth. If you all are William Shakespeare's fan, you might probably know of Macbeth. But we'll get to see him in the next round, hopefully, a, a few rounds. And she even felt the, betrayed by Goliath, who is now protecting humans still. Again, I have not seen most of the 80s cartoons of, like, He-Man, G.I. Joe, or Transformers, or Thundercats, or any of that stuff. I only prefer them as robot chicken villains. Because, as we all know, Robot Chicken likes to make spoofs off of 80s cartoons. And I guess, uh, Demona flees. And one thing good about TV villains is that, with movie villains in part one... They usually end up as defeated or dead. But with TV villains, you don't get a lot of defeat footage or death footages. You just see them, like, run away and stuff. Like, we'll be back. Like, we'll have our revenge. Yeah, sort of way. And it's kind of cool to have that. Next fight. Uh, Shigo from Disney's Compossibles, the series, versus Princess Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender. And... Pause. David Xanatos decides to send Shigo to fight off against the princess of the Fire Nation herself, Azula. And Dragon God likes the idea. Yeah, most of the time this is what David Xanatos would do. He would just play a game of chess in the war. And it kind of makes sense that Shigo and Azula would fight because they're both kind of similar and they both have similar powers. Huh. And, uh, hold on. Yeah, and I do, I've seen a few Kim Possible shows, and it's still pretty good, and... I, I was expecting Azula to win, but I did not expect Shigo to win. 
But yeah, but still. Okay, next fight. Joe the Ver the Fish f from Help I'm a Fish versus Marina Del Rey from Disney's The Little Mermaid 3 Ariel's Beginning. Uh sorry about that. Um one thing that's um I am not I am at first not seen this film yet before the round and I am not seeing Little Mermaid 3 because I, I'm in an agreement with History Buff High 5 3 for 1 here. I don't hate them. I just greatly dislike the straight to DVD sequels from Disney and the reason why is because Disney the company has a lot of bad about it and a lot of good. The good includes the Disney movies, the Disney theme parks, the Disney cruise lines, Disney records with their employees, you know, like their union relations. And then you have the bad stuff. Disney Channel, Radio Disney, Disney the stock market, you know, that's the stock of Disney, that's the greedy corporation side of Disney. The Disney live action remakes. And then you have the Disney straight to DVD sequels. Disney straight to DVD sequels to me and to history buff also represents everything that's bad about Disney. It's crappily made just like the Disney Channel. It appeals to, you know, it just does what it wants just to appeal audience and not actually connect with audience like Disney Radio. And it's just another attempt to make money. I mean, the original films were good enough, to, okay, and a lot, okay. The only Disney straight-to-DVD sequels that I do enjoy are The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride, The Aladdin sequels, Return to Neverland, Bambi 2, and Cinderella 3. That's it. The rest of them sucked. They are horrible. You could have kept them the way they are. Lady and the Tramp, we were fine with Tramp staying with Lady and her owners. We didn't need to see what happened to one of their puppies. Lion King, we were okay seeing Simba and his daughter. We didn't need to go back and see the prequel with Timon and Pumbaa and... Oh my god. And the Fox and the Hound! The Fox and the Hound strength didn't even see go feature Copper joining a band. What the hell? Sorry, it's just... I re really don't like them and I needed to rant out. Okay, so... I have not seen Little Mermaid 3. That's it. So... In description, a fact is fight. Joe the fish it has the potion that can make fish smarter. And Ursula sees this and sees it as a threat. I mean, aren't there some fishes that are smart already? Or are there a few that are not yet smart? Huh. Ursula sends Marina to deal with Joe. And at first, when this fight goes on, I just like, what the hey? The more he drinks it, he becomes human. And yet, look at that. That is just creepy. And, yeah, and he dies in the river. I just, like, what kind of movie is this from? And then I had to look it up. It turns out he's from a movie called Help, I'm a Fish. And you know what? It was a good movie. I mean, yeah, it's cheesy. Yeah, it's childish. Yeah, it's really cheesy, really childish. But let's just say if you babysit with a kid... It's actually a pretty good movie. It has a good life lesson. It talks about... It's a good message to kids. It talks about letting go of things and taking responsibilities. It's a really good movie. Plus, the actor that played the villain, Joe, is played by Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman, people. 
the same actor who played Professor Snape from Harry Potter. The guy who played Judge Turnip from Sweeney Todd. The guy who played the the marijuana smoking caterpillar from Tim Burton's Alice in Wonderland. What? Hey, did I say marijuana? He didn't smoke marijuana. Just, just forget. I, I have no idea what it was. That's the same mistake as his rebuff made. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, you got me on there. And Marina Delaway wins, I guess. And next one, the Baroness from G.I. Joe versus Cruella Deville. And I kind of, kind of found, thought it was a bit cheating that you used her twice in this round. And I can understand they had to take out Corella also, since they took out Medusa. That we're probably not going to see her again. Huh. Uh, it looks like she knocked her out to the... Under the bridge, I guess, and... If you all saw the movie, you all, we all know that is a crazy driver! She can have a race with Mr. Toad. See who's the maddest driver ever. And the Baroness wins by knocking them all off the cliff. Next fight. Amos Slade from Disney's The Fox and the Hound versus Seckle Khan. Kind of funny how I already mentioned about Fox and the Hound 2, which I'm not going to go into that again. But yet we already got him already. And, and the description is that... After the death of Frollo, some of the prisoners have escaped during the war in France. Huh. Guess El Dorado is back to being a Mayan culture city, I guess. And Shen Yu uh, recruits uh, Amos Slade to find him. Kind of funny. I mean, Amos Lane is not really a villain. He's just a grumpy old farmer. And... Yeah, I really like The Fox and the Hound. The first one. Not the stupid sequel. Don't get me started on that one. Yeah, Amos Lane is one of my favorite characters. I mean, it's hard to call him a villain. He's not really a villain. He's just a grumpy old hunter. It's kind of funny how they chose Amos Slade to catch Seckle Khan. And a lot of people kind of uh, agree that it's funny. A lot of people have been looking for thousands of years, so many years to find El Dorado, and yet Amos Slade is able to drive all the way to El Dorado. How ironic, am I right? It's very amusing. Makes you wonder if we can drive all the way to down Atlantis to find it. <laughs> And Suckle Khan is warned by one of his acolytes that Amos Slade has arrived. Or But they probably don't know his name, but they probably call him the Stranger. And Suckle and looks like Amos Slade has found him and shoots him in the eye, I guess. I kinda of feel that bad for Copper being dragged into the war. And Suckle Khan is using these illusions. You know, to scare Amos Slade. Huh. Yeah, he's gonna freak out. I'd be freaked out too. Is this the last time we'll be seeing of Amos Slade? I hope not. I hope we see more of him. To work, maybe get him team up with anti heroes to stop the war. And Eris arrives to recruit Seckle Khan. Look at him. Kind of cool that these two are teaming up, because they're, they're both DreamWorks villains. In the epilogue, Cobra Commander congratulates the Baroness and his other soldiers on their success of defeating Corella and Medusa, and focus on the more major, bigger th things. And Dr. Stockman from the 2003 T Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles is getting contact by the Shredder, or as we all know as Oroku Saki. And John Silver arrives at the Forbidden Mountains, gives Maleficent the lamp. 
Maybe he didn't know it was an, a, a just not just a lamp, but a genie's lamp. And he's surprised. And now Jafar is now going to serve Maleficent. I guess you're going to give her three wishes, bro. And Mosenrath is welcome among Shen Yu's ranks. And yeah, this is where Cobra Commander has Edgar to call him Commander. I mean, something I agree with both History Buff and CK Primeval 7 about Cobra Commander. We get it! You're a commander! You don't have to shout at every time! Like, I am a commander! I command me! I order you! I am your commander! Just shut up already, dude! We get it! You're a commander! And Corella Deville is upset. Of course. Now that she lost the criminal empire. And the Snow Queen sees that Stormella is dead and now she turn gets a new form. I'm not sure which form this this version of it is, but it, it does look good. And in Mount Olympus where Hades is ruling, Dr. Fasili and the Snow Queen see the Snow Queen as a big threat and oh yeah, while Hades is ruling Mount Olympus, Dr. Fasalier is the ruler of the underworld. You know, when you kind of think of it, it kind of fits him. Well, I'm not sure what that one was about. And hold on. And the Armageddon key is Chernobog. Interesting. So... Yeah, this was Disney versus non-Disney villains, part two, round two, and again, uh, sorry that it has to be a clip from CK's fan commentaries. I, what else can I do? It's not like I just mess with the iPad and they get a virus for it. That, that no, I'm not gonna do it. So, yeah, the interesting round. This is this is Corey the Keyblade Wielder, may your heart be your guiding key. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe.